Hello and welcome to Career Corner, where we answer your career cues. My name is Lucas Kaufman, and joining me today, we have two very incredible guests. First off is Eden Strawn, award-winning journalist and filmmaker and writer and founder of Black Girls Don't Get Love, as well as Christina Corona, co-founder of FilmUp and co-host of the Film Up podcast. Eden and Christina, welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Very excited to have you here today in our uh, uh, joined remotely through Zoom. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves, um, what your experience was like here at Ithaca College and what you're doing now. Um, yeah, I mean, I started at Ithaca College in 2011, graduating in 2015 with a TV and media production degree. And uh, I did, when I was at Ithaca, I did the uh, LA program my junior year, which was incredible. It actually led to my first job in New York for Jay-Z's production company, Scheme Engine. And so it was such an um, incredible segue, like everything that is relevant to me now stems from my experience at IC. So it was a really, really awesome experience for me. And um, I got started um, with actually my experience in LA as well. So I was a documentary studies and production major, and I had the opportunity to go to LA as a television academy intern um, and study development. And that was really where I got my feet wet in the business and kind of really understanding what it meant to be a producer. And um, I came back to school and I was uh, very fortunate to be able to um, kind of shift my studies. I love the doc studies major because it was journalism, film and photography. But I also knew that I had this passion for scripted content. And um, I talked to my advisor, John Scott, and he was very uh, gracious to allow me to uh, move some things around and also get into Kathy Crane's uh, thesis cinema production course. And that was a game changer for me um, and um, really the foundation of uh, getting Black Girls Don't Get Love started. Both of you guys are, are working on some really incredible projects. We'll, we'll start with Eden. Just to tell the uh, our listeners here uh, a little bit about what you've been working on. Yeah, so Black Girls Don't Get Love is a book and multimedia coming of age brand for girls of color. We provide content and experiences for girls of color to feel seen and celebrated in the skin that they're in. That comes in the form of our large scale experiences, such as our prom, slumber party, outdoor exploration, and recent film training program, which was actually presented by Ithaca College, where uh, we had girls of color and allies from across the country participate in a Hollywood standard production experience. They got to get um, take tracks in producing, directing, acting, cinematography, post-production, and screenwriting. And they got to um, make their own team docs, um, which are a cool way of saying team documentaries. And um, they also got to um, write scripts as part of our screenwriting workshop. And those were spec scripts uh, based on the Black Girls Don't Get Love book. Incredible. And uh, Christina, how about you? What have you been working on? Well, first, that's amazing. I don't know how to follow up on that. <laughs> I um, currently am working on my company, Film Up. So I actually co-founded Film Up with another IC alum, R.A. Hoppenstein, who's amazing. And uh, we, over the last eight years, have built a brand with over probably a million followers, primarily in the media space. We also launched the Film Up podcast, where we highlight and honor amazing filmmakers from the DOP of Ozark to makeup artists and Euphoria. Um, but our one of our main initiatives, which I can't go too in depth with right now, but I can soon, which is to automate and democratize the filmmaking process. And so we're working on something big for that um, coming soon. Uh, how did what was your experience going from uh, your college education here at IC into the career you're now in? Just what was that transition like and uh, maybe even some more tips on on what to do on your way from college to career. So um, for me, um, Black Girls Don't Get Love was actually my senior thesis film. And um, I'm really, really proud of being able to get it off a hard drive and, you know, get some attention with it. We just uh, signed a deal with Row House Publishers and uh, Black Girls Don't Get Love. The book will be distributed through Simon & Schuster um, sometime next year. And so that's a huge deal for us um, to have a senior thesis project, then uh, be able to have um, scaling potential nationally. And so um, for me, um, I wanted to make sure that I made a proof of concept that was good enough to um, get attention of people um, in the industry and have a commercial viability factor to the work so that 
um, it was not only authentic in my voice and then um, the story that connects with hopefully girls of color across the country, but also something that people could uh, see on the shelves and um, to see it um, in girls of color's hands. Um, I think that um, that was really important to me. And um, for me, it was a pretty quick transition. Um, two weeks after I graduated, I started at Scheme Engine, which is a subsidiary of Rock Nation. Um, and so I was kind of thrown into the producing world and music industry, and it was chaos and and all that fun stuff. But I think something that I took from IC that was really important was how how critical, genuine, and authentic relationships are. Um, everything and that I kind of achieved after college stemmed from those relationships that I made in college. And I think that's a really big thing is make sure you um, really emphasize your relationships because that's what's going to get you really far. Yeah. And would you say that's the uh, the the most important thing you learned at IC? Yes. I, I mean, there's um, so many, but that is probably the biggest one for me. And uh, Eden, how about you? What do you think the most important thing you learned at uh, Ithaca College was and, and how does it help you in your work today? Well, I it's hard to summarize the lessons into just one thing because um, the education at Ithaca was so rich for me um, and just the level of collaboration. I actually remember on the college tour that we went on, um, Pete Johans, he said that the, the thing that makes Ethic College so special is that here we don't uh, compete, we collaborate. And I found that experience to be true even years after graduating because um, the value of being able to work with people that actually want to produce quality work cannot be understated. And so, um, of course, uh, what Christina said with the relationships is really important, but also just trying to perfect the craft as much as you can, making work samples um, often they're not going to be perfect, but um, getting exercising those muscles so that when your opportunity does come, you'll be ready for it. I definitely agree. Yeah, here at IC, we definitely have an atmosphere of, of collaboration versus, uh, you know, kind of straying away from competition. But I would imagine it's a little bit different out there in the field. What are some challenges you've faced and how do you come overcome uh, adversity in this field when when you you know you're faced with challenges, especially when a project might be very close to your heart and personal to you, how do you kind of take feedback or or overcome hurdles when they arrive? Oof, that's a big one. Um, do you want to go, Eden, or should? Sure. Should I? Yes. Yeah. Um. Well, I remember getting some advice. Um. In terms of the scripted world, about uh the fact that the doors will constantly be slammed in your face, and you'll get more no's than you get yeses, and. Um, I think that advice, while uh, really humbling, was actually so valuable because um, I'll always give my best in a pitch, even if um, I am not sure how it's going to go. Um, every time just showing up with the most um, enthusiasm and charisma that I possibly can, because when you do get that yes, um, it makes all of those no's worth it. And so um, just being prepared um, for me, um, always having books on hand, always having decks ready. Um, you don't want to be um, pitching yourself if you're not ready with the assets that you need when they do say yes. So um, just having that preparation down ahead of time goes a long way um, in terms of being perceived as professional and um, also being ready to capitalize on whatever opportunity might be available to you. Having a purpose that's bigger than yourself is really important. I think when you believe that what you're doing is tied to that purpose, the adv adversity becomes much more worth it. You will work harder to solve the problems. You'll be more resilient and you'll be prouder of what you're doing. I also think the perspective of like um, everything doesn't really matter is also something <laughs> that I hang on to, which is like, of course, what you're doing is important, but if you look at the grand scheme of things, you're so small. And so just kind of like keep a perspective grounded and I think you'll be okay. And to add to that, um, one of those phrases that someone said was nobody knows anything. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? But really when I kind of became like more familiar with the business, um, it kind of humanized everyone that everyone's just trying to figure it out and everyone's just trying to figure out what works. Uh, kind of still on the on the topic of, of challenges, were there any challenges that the two of you uh, specifically faced, whether in, in your um, process uh, publishing 
um, Black Girls Don't Get Love or or in the, the creation of, of film up in the film of podcast? Any specific challenges that uh, you came across and how you overcame them? I think there's, there's so many, but I think there's this unrealistic standard of dedication to pursue both art and entrepreneurship. And your job is never truly finished. Like you're in bed working till 1 a.m. And so the biggest challenge for me has been finding the balance of it all, if that makes sense, like creating the routine and setting the boundaries professionally and personally so that I can show up as the best version of myself has been really challenging because I feel like no one really teaches you how to set boundaries. Like that's something you you learn all the crafts and you learn all these things. But from a mental health perspective, that's been my biggest struggle because I'm I'm such a motivated person. I don't I didn't know when to stop. And burnout kind of taught me how I needed to step back and set the boundaries. Like, for example, I work out every morning, I meditate, I have a gratitude journal that I write in. So I make sure that I have perspective for the day. And so I think that like setting up a routine is so important um, professionally. Yes, I think setting strategic goals and um, making timelines for those goals really helps to balance out the work. Um, one of my favorite quotes is uh, from Malcolm Gladwell about um, it taking 10,000 hours to achieve excellence in a craft or skill. And I remember when I heard that, um, I wasn't at the place that I'd put in the 10,000 hours. Um, and <laughs> when I realized that I took like such an aggressive dive to achieve the 10,000 hours, but it wasn't a sustainable model. Um, and having, you know, put in my time and feeling like I've achieved that excellence, um, specifically in the area of like producing, um, I reevaluate and say, okay, I still have room to grow. So how do I make this growth more sustainable and do a little bit every day, uh, study, you know, texts of great producers or watching work or um, whatever that may look like for our business. Um, but making sure that um, the timeline is a really reasonable for, um, you know, the work that I have to do and uh, the goals that I have. I love that quote. It's also like, it's to remember, like, the bigger your dream is, the more patient you need to be. Mm -hmm. Like, you That's need cool. to just like, take a breath, it's gonna like, trust in the unfolding of everything. And actually something really practical I've been doing that has been helpful is which is my co-founder inspired me it's a jewish tradition it's shabbat and you shut off from like friday evening to saturday evening and i've been doing that and it's it honestly has changed my life of just like disconnecting so that i can show up the other six days a week 120 percent. so that's something that's been really cool so uh you guys both work uh your 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 projects and endeavors um deal with a lot of uh pre-production work uh, do you have any advice for people who are doing some more like on set work, well, you know, like working on cameras or directing any any insights into the 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 production and maybe even post production side of the world? I would advise anyone that is um, hoping to get on set or if you got the opportunity to just prepare yourself ahead of time. Um, I think a lot of us don't really know what to expect when we get on these industry sets. And so um I would recommend reading the PA handbook before, you know, getting on to kind of figure out the lay of the land. Um, I advise like my mentees to read producer to producer and read, um, you know, directing actors and all of those, you know, like iconic texts that really kind of talk about what um, the relationships on set might look like um, so that you can have an idea of what's going on and um, that you can um, ask informed questions and, um, really have that confidence going into it that yes, you're going to be learning, but you also are not going into it blind. I love that. And I I think also, like you said, you never know what to expect on a set. It's honestly always chaos. So I think depending on what your role is, like, for example, if you're a PA, I would say, you know, just try to help everyone do everything you can to make other people on set their lives easier because it's it's a crazy environment to be in. And um, I think the harder you work, um, the better off you'll be in the future. Me too. I mean, it gives me chills just hearing it and just also being a visionary because um, for a lot of people, like they don't talk about film as a business. And I think that um, 
in the opportunity that I've been given uh, to teach and mentor uh, the next generation of filmmakers, like I want to make sure to drive that home that when you are um, making a film, you're starting a business and you are um, really needing to understand strategies that merge entrepreneurship and filmmaking all in one and really having that driving force behind the work that you're doing because um, if you don't have your why, you can't do this. It is it is draining work. Um, anyone that says otherwise is probably not telling the truth. Um, <laughs> this is, it's a lot. And so you got to get up for something that is meaningful. Um, and you're going to have to work on a project for two to five years, as um, Maureen Ryan from Producer to Producer says. So, um, you know, make sure it's something that you really believe in. Eden and Christina, what would you say your your proudest achievement has been so far in your career? Honestly, it's like the simple, like small things for me. Like, you know, we, Ari and I, you know, got off a podcast and one of the guests said that was one of the best interviews they've ever had or they've ever done. And it was so much fun. And so it's like little moments like that of just connecting with humans along the way are my proudest moments in a weird way. I think my proudest uh, accomplishment from this work that I've been doing with Black Girls Don't Get Love has been um, having a national reach uh, with the work that we're doing. I was really surprised when I saw girls literally flying from across the country to be here for the Black Girls Don't Get Love film training program. Wow. Um, we had girls, <laughs> thank you, we had girls from 10 different states and um, I remember the moment when I looked at the applications and I'm like, oh my goodness, like we have girls from Tennessee and Colorado and um, one of the filmmakers from Tennessee, she actually took a flight to New York and then a, a bus from New York to Syracuse just to be here. Um, and that just was like the most validating thing for me to like know that girls across the country um need the work that we're doing and they value it and so um for me that um made me even want to just work even harder to make sure this experience was super valuable for them because um they put their trust into the work that we're doing um and I want to make sure that um it was something special for them and that they took away uh, valuable insights that would help them continue to grow their careers it's amazing thank you <laughs> Really incredible. And if you could leave uh, the listeners of this podcast with with one thing, whether it be uh, advice for for people looking to get into this field or just any advice at all for for the the general student populace, uh, what what would you say to our listeners? I would um, encourage students to uh, continue to make projects. Um, you get better every single time you make something, and with this this industry you have to have work samples that you're proud of. Um, I remember hearing people say that you don't wanna apologize for your work. And so um, continue to work until you get you get to a place that you can say, this is what I've made and I'm proud of it um, and try to make something great. The first is I think, you know, no matter what you're creating, the true, the true instrument is yourself and your perspective and no one else has that. So use that in everything that you do because it's going to be unique. Um, and then I'm going to borrow, I'm going to butcher it, but uh, <laughs> my favorite book is called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And he said, do whatever is put in front of you with all your heart and soul without regard for personal results. Um, and he said something along the lines of do do the work as though it was given to you by the universe because it was. And so just do everything in front of you with all your heart and you will get somewhere. Amazing. Well, uh Eden and Christina, uh, before we close out, if you want to just uh, plug your your socials one more time where people can find you and your projects. Cool. Yeah, you can find the film up at filmup.co on Instagram. And if you want to listen to the podcast, it's the film up podcast on Instagram. And you can find Black Girls Don't Get Love at blackgirlsdon'tgetlove.com or um, at Black Girls Don't Get Love on Instagram and Facebook. Amazing. Thank you, both of you, so much for, for coming and joining us today. And uh, it's been great having you. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you, Lucas. This was great. Um, and thank you, Christina, for sharing the space. This was fun. So much fun. And for the uh, the folks at home, you <laughs> believe it or not, you don't have to wait for our next episode to get career guidance. You can visit office hours every weekday from 11 to 2 in Muller Faculty Center 101. I'm Lucas Kaufman, and this has been Career Corner. <laughs>